Will your existing CPU bottleneck your GPU? Let's say, for example, if you plan to get the RTX 4090. But if you have a CPU like this, this is the Ryzen 5600X. Today, we're going to answer these questions. We're going to look at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p with some numbers and some CPU suggestions and what you should do if you're worried about your CPU bottlenecking your really expensive GPU. So the RTX 4090 is coming out and something like this. This is a 1080 Ti Kingpin by now almost a collector's item, a classic GPU. This used to be the best GPU you could possibly get, but this was several years ago. Now with people looking at the RTX 4090, as well as all the other GPUs in the series, even the powerful RTX 3000, this is going to apply to that as well. It's not specific to the 4090. So is your CPU CPU gonna bottleneck your GPU. The good news is CPUs have been getting better and better and now we're in the midst of brand new generational releases from both AMD as well as Intel with Zen 4 and Intel's 13900K. Are you gonna need the best CPU to keep up with the best GPU? Well let's look at some numbers and this should make it easy for you guys. First let's start off with 4K or really any high resolution. This will apply as well to 8K. If you're doing triple monitors like I like doing sim racing and that often gets pretty crazy with its resolution especially if you combine three 1440p monitors so if you're doing something like 4k for example you have actually very little to worry about most of the modern CPUs should be able to handle it it's actually pretty funny how that works at a 4k resolution the problem is going to be your GPU really all of that performance is generally going to go to the GPU of course there are some games and use cases where the CPU will be used a little more than others but as a general rule of thumb if you're going to be playing at 4k almost anything is going to be pretty good something like this a 5600x which is just a six core cpu is going to be almost as good as a 7950x at 4k the newest cpu so it doesn't make that big of a difference if we look at this relevant performance graph here you can see that basically they're all within a certain percentage of each other even if you go back to older cpus from last generation maybe even the ryzen 3000 series even intel 9th and 10th generation typically at 4k the gpu is going to be doing all the heavy lifting so if you do get a 4090 and you want to play some 4k games almost anything that you have in there even a threadripper cpu which typically is not that great for gaming should actually do fine because like i said the gpu is doing all of the heavy lifting now, of course, if you are buying the 4090, you may want the fastest CPU anyway, and that's not going to hurt you. That's going to be great for other things like content creation, or if you do decide to switch up resolutions in the future. So the suggestion here is anything really works as long as it's fairly modern and reasonable. Of course, having stuff like a DDR5 and having the newest spec of PCIe Generation 5 with really fast you know, M.2 SSDs, that's going to help your overall system performance as well so if you're getting a 4090 of course you do want to pair it with probably a newer cpu just because of the system but to play at 4k you don't necessarily have to let's say if you still have a 9900k and you want to throw in a 4090 into that system at 4k it's going to do more than well enough even something like a 5600x which is going to be you know last generation's sort of entry level high performance ryzen cpu even that's going to do pretty great at 4k all right, so let's go on to the next resolution that gets a little bit tricky. That's going to be 1440p. Now, as you would imagine, being in between 1080p, this one is going to be exactly what you expect. It's not going to be as perhaps big of a difference as 1080p in terms of how it uses the CPU. And it's, of course, it's not going to be as idle as it will be at 4K, but it certainly does make a difference here. And you could almost put in maybe ultra wide, which is, you know, 3440 by 1440 into the same category category that just keep in mind it's going to go a little closer to 4k in terms of its resolution so the efficacy of a powerful cpu probably drops a little bit but it's still certainly applicable in many situations now at 1440p your cpu choice does start to matter a lot more than 4k depending on the game of course some games may even do better with multi-core cpus if they if they really take advantage of them as a rule of thumb games typically really go off a higher ipc or single core performance 
performance, like a high clock speed. That's why the new Ryzen chips going all the way up to 5.7 gigahertz do really, really well, as well as traditionally Intel has done really well with very high IPC. So 1440p, you will likely want to get a pretty powerful CPU to go with your 4090. This is where I kind of draw the line. And I think if you want to play 1440p with a 4090, which is perhaps a little bit overkill, but depending on the game, you are going to get insane frames per second. Um, 4090 can already crush 4K in many cases. So at 1440p, you're going to get amazing performance and you don't want to bottleneck that with a slow or older CPU. Now, you don't necessarily need the most expensive like 7950X or even a 13900K at 1440p to do well because those, after all, they're not specifically just gaming CPUs. They have a lot of great multi-threaded, multi-core performance. They're going to be good for somebody who wants to do content creation or have it as a workstation as well. Gaming, like I said, does not need that nearly as much, but you do want a more modern, really fast chip. At 1440p, anything from the new Ryzen 7000 lineup should do more than well enough, including the 76 600x on up likewise from intel 12600k 12700k any of those are going to do great in terms of their gaming performance if you're just basically doing gaming those should be definitely more than enough now keep in mind that depending on the game some games are taking more advantage of multi-core cpus as we go so if you really want to pair it with a 4090 like i said the line has to be drawn somewhere i would go maybe for one of the two or three top newer cpus even though it's going to be a little more expensive then you know you're not going to bottle your 4090 which at 1440p you have a better chance of doing so than at 4k of course some people just want to do 4k and that's fine but if you do want to get a 4090 at 1440p one of the newer really fast cpus certainly will make a difference is there going to be a difference between a 13900k for example and a 12900k not really drastically as much but we do expect to see some benefits in having the faster cpu after all they're very highly tuned as well for gaming and 1440p P certainly is a resolution that's very sensitive to different changes in what CPU it's using. Now, if you have something older, like even a 10900K compared to a 1200K, I do believe in many games you definitely will get a benefit. This isn't like 4K where everything's basically a wash within a few percentage points. You can have some games with much bigger swings and performance and frames per second with the newer chips. So if you do want to get a 4090, part of that cost, I do think you need a fairly high-end CPU. It doesn't have to be the most expensive one by any means, unless you're doing content creation or something like that, but it should at least be one of the very high performing CPUs, maybe something like a, a 7900X or maybe a 7700X might even be okay, or, you know, a 12700K and up or something like that. Definitely as you go further back, of course, it's still going to be usable. It's not going to bottleneck it a lot, but if you're going to spend that much money on a 4090, I don't think you should really compromise that much at 1440p you might as well just get a really fast CPU and make sure you're okay with it. Now, as we step into 1080p, that's when things get more extreme. We went from 4K not mattering too much, like you can throw a 5600X at 4K with a 4090, and you're gonna be probably around the same numbers as somebody with a 7950X. 1440p, like we mentioned, it's a little bit more in the middle. I do tend to go towards a higher end CPU because you do start to notice more differences at that resolution, but at 1080p, if you're playing planning on using a 4090 at 1080p, which is not unusual. You might have a really high refresh rate monitor, like 360 hertz, 500 hertz. Some monitors may even start to go up to 600 hertz. So games like Overwatch 2 do go up now to 600 FPS. Of course, Counter-Strike always goes up really high. At 1080p, your CPU is going to play a lot better bigger of a role during most games across the board compared to the higher resolutions. So if you're pairing a 4090 at 1080p, that means you're either a competitive gamer or somebody who wants that extra edge, or else you'd be playing at 4K where you get nicer, more relaxed visual fidelity, if you will. If you're just a casual, you know, high-end enthusiast gamer, you don't care about that super high-speed performance. So at 1080p, 
4090, I think it's almost essential that you get the fastest CPU and newest that you can afford, just because it's going to be least likely to bottleneck that performance. If you want to go for a cheaper CPU, at that point, you might as well just get a cheaper GPU as well. The 4090 is going to be way too much overkill. You might as well go for like a 3070 or a 3080 or something like that. They're going to really still do well at that resolution, and you're not going to be bottlenecking them by a cheaper CPU like you would with the 4090. Now, the people that will pair a 4090 at 1080p, like I said, it's going to be a lot less than the other resolutions. I would guess the most dominant resolution will be 1440p, close now to 4K, since, you know, the 4090 does 4K extremely well, even though those monitors still are, you know, coming down in price and they're improving in their, you know, technology the last few years. So 1080p, um, I don't think it'd be odd at all if you use a 7950X, a 7900X. Remember, you still don't need the most expensive of CPU for 1080p uh, with a 4090 or something really intense like that, unless you're also going to be doing content creation or multi-threaded workloads, it's still mostly beneficial to have that high IPC and high clock speeds, meaning that even a 7900X will probably be fine or maybe even a little faster sometimes than a 7950X. Likewise, with a 12900K, 12900KS, and a 1300K. Now, we're going to see the reviews of the 1300K versus a 12900K, but you can certainly expect definitely some performance uplift from the newer generation at 1080p, especially if you're pushing a 4090, you're definitely going to see differences there. So like I said, unless you want to go cheaper with a cheaper GPU and get a mid-range or just, you know, lower high-end CPU, if you really want to pair a 4090 at 1080p, I think you might as well go for gold and just get the fastest CPU you can, because this is the resolution most sensitive to different CPUs. It's going to be more relevant having a good CPU here, and that's certainly where you do want to go if you want to do that combination. Now, I'm also going to make another video discussing, you know, more regular non 4090 GPUs and other CPUs because then it definitely changes the math a little bit, as it may certainly be more reasonable to pair like a mid range CPU with maybe like the entry level 4080 or, or even a 3090 or a 3080 Ti. Maybe you don't necessarily want or need the absolute fastest CPU, even though it's still going to apply the same rules you know, depending on the resolution that you want to play. It just makes sense to me with a 4090. If you're going to go out and buy something that expensive, you definitely don't want to compromise. At 4K, it's already a high resolution. You probably want a fast CPU in your system anyway, even though it's not really as relevant, but definitely 1440p and down, you definitely want to get the fastest CPU you can fit in your budget, or else you're going to severely bottleneck your 4090. If you're playing at 1080p with like a 5600X, yes, you're going to find uh, there's a huge difference between this and something like a 7950X or a 13900K when you're using the 4090 in most games in 1080p, especially competitive games, that's where you're going to see that difference. All right, guys, so I hope you found this video useful. I do plan to make other ones covering a larger spectrum of budgets and GPUs. This one specifically, since the 4090 is coming out this week, I just wanted to cover this 4090 specifically with some recommendations that people may want to actually use depending on the resolution that they're using. So remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.